talk would be uh, by Dr. Suniti Mishra. Uh, she is a consultant pathologist at the Department of Pathology in Manipal Hospital. Uh, she has been trained in oncopathology at uh, Tata Memorial Hospital in Mumbai. We cannot overemphasize the importance of pathology in the treatment of uh, malignancies, especially when it comes to endometrial uh, carcinomas. Madam would be talking on the importance of frozen section in the treatment of uh, endometrial carcinomas. I would request Madam to take over. Thank you so much, sir. First of all, let me thank uh, Dr. Shamshekhar for giving me this opportunity. And I realize that I'm the only pathologist, except for my uh, uh, colleagues there in this uh, esteemed uh, people of oncologists. Let me try to explain as good as I can. Now, if you see, the surgical staging is a very important step in the uh, treatment of uh, endometrial carcinomas. Now, uh, what is, uh, why it is important? Because we know that the clinical staging will not be accurate. It has been, does not reflect the actual disease and extent of 15 to 20 percent in the patients. And what do you mean by surgical staging is the, uh, we do the pelvic and parietic lymph node dissection. Through frozen section, we can definitely identify the patient who will benefit by surgical staging. Now, uh, what are the indications for frozen section? You, you have two, two times, two places broadly we can divide when you have a diagnosis of complex endometrial hyperplasia on a DNC specimen. Though there are strict criteria to diagnose an endometrial carcinoma on a DNC material, but sometimes it can be very, very difficult for us to 100% say that it is a carcinoma. In that case, definitely you'll send us a frozen section for endometrium. So in that case, to find out whether there is really a tumor, residual tumor, if it is there, then what is the depth of invasion? And of course, if there is a carcinoma present in a frozen section, we will like to do a surgical staging by dividing the patient into high risk and the low risk category. Now, uh, suppose in the DNC material, already you have a diagnosis of an endometrial carcinoma, what we'll do? You will always uh, stage, do, try to do a clinical staging by doing an um, imaging analysis where you know that already the patient has metastasis you in that case I don't think you will ever send it also for frozen section but definitely if you are not able to do a clinical staging uh, uh, diagnosing a late stage carcinoma you will send the uterus to us now in the uterus when it comes to us we would like to divide it into low risk, uh, low risk and a high risk categories now what are the criteria it is the size histology grade and depth of myometrial invasion now, uh, what is the size? Size, the criteria is two, two, uh, two, less than 2 cm and 2 cm, grade is 1 or 2 and grade 3 and depth is less than 50 percent or more than 50 percent. So these are the four main criteria which we study on the frozen section which will definitely help uh, the surgeon to categorize uh, the patient and decide on the surgical staging. Now, wh why it is important? If you see the uh, literature, what it says, if it is a grade one, less than 50% myometrial invasion, the chances of metastasis is less than 1%. But if it is grade three, the chances of metastasis pelvic is as uh, big as 60 and uh, for aortic it is 40%. Now, why, why it is so important? to diagnose this patient because it has been uh, found that lymphadec uh, lymphadenectomy in the patient where in a low risk patient and early stage has does not have any cervical benefit in this. Uh, these are the, I think the GOG uh, trial which uh, says that and of course there are some disadvantage of doing over treatment for the patient where you are uh, having lympho uh, lymphocele or lymphoria, paralytic helios and DVT which we would like to avoid by doing frozen section. Now if you see the literature, what is the accuracy of frozen section in literature is ranges from 80 to 95 percent. Now this Kumar S is a uh, study from uh, Mayo Clinic where they have an accuracy of 95 percent but in this one Japan uh, one uh, paper from the Japan shows that the accuracy is their accuracy was 84 percent. So there is I think it depends upon more on the experience and the institute where the studies have been done. If you see our experience I have studied 48 patients in which correlation was in 44 patients. That is al almost equal to 92% and four patients we didn't had. Now I would like to show you wh wh what we do exactly during frozen section. First we would like to re receive the specimen intact. 
will divide the uterus into two halves. If you see in this, you can see the you can see that the uh, the uh, uh, this one that tumor is occluding the uh, lumen of the endometrium. So we know that already there is an extension of tumor in the um, yeah, endocervical region. So it is the size of the tumor is already more than two centimeters. So one criteria for high risk categories always is already been uh, done on grass examination. So what do we do next is. On each half of the uterus, we'll cut into three to five cent, uh, millimeters of thin strips of endometrium. What the idea of doing is that to see the depth of invasion and to select the most appropriate area where I can see on gross examination that the tumor is going into the maximum into the myometrium. The same uh, gross examination. This is another area where you see that is a, uh, there is a tumor in the fundus and the uh, size is less than two centimeter, but we have at least two sections we examine. See the depth of maximum depth of invasion in each section and take it for processing. This is another case. So I would say that gross inspection is the most important for a pathologist to see to identify the section in which we will identify that there is a maximum depth of invasion because depth of invasion is the one of the most important criteria to select the patient for surgical staging. Now coming on histology, how we say that if there is a carcinoma, if we can see there are glands and there is a stroma, these are the two main, main uh, um, component of endometrium on histology. So if they are widely divided, there is no, uh, there is no uh, features for uh, co uh, co collision of the glands and there is a lot of stroma, we know that there is no tumor. This is the same slide of the specimen which I showed you. If you see the endometrium looks so bizarre and uh, uh, very thickened, but if you go on histology, it is not showing carcinoma. Secondly, when do we say it is a carcinoma, the glands comes together. Then we go on the grading, depends upon the number of glands which are present in the stroma, we divide into grade 1, 2 and 3. The same one, if you see in these slides down, if you see here, this is the, uh, this, this is a tumor in this, in the sheets. But here in the down, they are still is a grade one. So there is on the same slide, depending upon the uh, the uh, part which I have taken for frozen section is sh showing us the three grade uh, three uh, two types. One is a grade three and one is a grade two. If I miss this on on frozen section, it will be a uh, the surging st uh, staging may not be proper. Now what are the other histologies? Most commonly we see on frozen is the squamous and the papillary serous carcinomas. If a histopathologist give you a diagnosis, this comes under high grade ca uh, categories and the patient automatically goes into a high risk uh, category requiring a pelvic and paraortic dissection. The most important for us is a myometrial invasion. I have given a, uh, uh, this one sections, but how do I identify on histology? Histology also will show there are some helpful criteria on histology. If you see normal histology, uh, the, uh, there is a thin wall, blood vessels are present in upper one third, whereas a thick wall in the lower one third of the myometrium. So if I see the tumor at the level of this blood vessel, I'm 100% sure that it is more than 50% myometrial invasion and I can, we can always correctly diagnose the high risk patients on frozen section. So if you see, this is the staging, you, you uh, diagnose, uh, you on frozen section, you put them at a low risk or high risk, depending upon, you can always stage the patient. Now if you see the algorithm, the early, early stage endometrial carcinoma, you're sending it for frozen section. Now, what are the low risk at you come across this one, diagnosis from frozen section, that it is endometroid, grade one, myometrial invasion is less than 50% and tumor diameter is less than two centimeter. You know that it is low risk. There won't be any added advantage of doing a pelvic dissection. You'll be over treating the patient. You can always put it on a surveillance. But if on the endometroid, you get a grade two, less than 50%. So are you going, you are going to do pelvic, but do we do para dissection in this? This can be subject for debate, but what from our experience, we can say that if the tumor diameter is more than two centimeter, please do para because two of, uh, I've seen patient recurrence not doing, uh, if para are not done, especially if the tumor is extending up to the endocervical region. 
<coughs> so in a frozen section, three things are very important for us to tell you. That is which type it is, which grade, myometer invasion and diameter or the size of the tumor. So in a high risk category, what will be the features? Any other histology other than endometroid or endometroid grade 3, myometrial invasion of more than 50% and tumor diameter of more than 2%. You will, you will do all uh, lymph node dissection. Then if the nodes are negative on paraffin section, you assess the other parameters on the, uh, on the report and depending upon that, the patient will go for vaginal uh, brachotherapy or a systemic therapy. So what are the advantages and limitations for frozen section? Definitely advantage is it is reliable, cost effective method to identify patients for surgical staging and it can detect grade and depth of myometrial invasion with high accuracy. Now limitations as in any frozen section, there will be chances of sa sampling error but which we can avoid by doing a good gross examination and taking appropriate representative sections and um, it depends upon the expertise and the uh, experience of the pathologist. Now the take home message mainly is that risk factors for lymph node metastasis can be identified but the careful gross examination is very important. Appropriate surgical staging especially in the early stage and high risk endometrial carcinomas can be achieved by frozen section. Thank you so much for patient hearing. Thank you, madam, for a very lucid presentation. I think we do have time to take a couple of questions, if any. That one was a tumor. So how do we identify grossly? Usually tumors will be very irregular, but depends upon the size. There are no strict criteria. Depends upon the size rather than the uh, location of the tumor. Size more than 2 centimeter, definitely. If less than 2 centimeter, grade 1, I don't think it will be. You have got a polypoid growth. Yes. Where is your, and there is no myometrial invasion. Yes. Uh, where is the diameter taken? We'll take off the polyp only. The size, the size of the polyp will be the main criteria for that. Maximum diameter. Maximum diameter of the polyp we will take. Okay. But definitely I will take from the, uh, along with the polyp, I'll take the base of the myometrium to see if there is any invasion. So, I'm, so in a situation where there is no invasion, Right. Polypoid. Yes. So, query was exactly yeah. so we'll where. Take size of the polyp we will take. If the size of the polyp yeah. is more than 2 centimeters. You take, take that the diameter more. of the tumor is more than 2 centimeters. Okay, thank you. Question, please. Please, sir. I am from Bangladesh. Uh, usually we diagnose the uh, endometrial carcinoma histopathy by taking the endometrial and endocervical, endocervical sample separately. If endocervical sample is positive, uh, uh, whether in this case uh, frozen biopsy is needed or not? Sir, <coughs> sir um, if you say that if you are taken, you are sure from it is from endocervical, if yes. I am say, giving a tumor, then definitely it should be a um, it Stage should be an endocervical extension, but still I, it should be sent for frozen because it or you can cut on the on the OT table, cut and see whether grossly it is going into endometrium that will give you a size of uh, the tumor uh, which will be definitely but, uh, more than 2 centimeters if, if, uh, if it is extended to the endocervical region. Yes. In, so it, it is, has to be the parabiotics should be done, that's what uh, is through the oh. study I can uh, tell. To take decision about the parabiotic. Yes. Decision. Yes. So have you looked at the data and what is the discordance between final and uh, frozen? I showed ma'am uh, 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 among uh, the 48. Of grade and depth yeah. of infiltration. So among the uh, 48 mm -hmm. I have done 4 we had a discordance. So 2 was that on a frozen there was no tumor but on the paraffin it was tumor was shown. But fortunately all these were very small tumors. And it was uh, grade 2, less than 50 myometrium, less than 2 centimeter. So only in one patient, I think it has a therapeutic implication because it was uh, grade 2. And uh, in that case, uh, patient had to. But if you see, if you see the uh, therapeutic implication, only one patient had on that. In cases of complex atypical hyperplasia, we know that 15 to 20 percent might have early endometrial cancer. So in those cases, are you recommend that it should yes. be sent for frozen if because I, if invariably it is grade one less than 
50 yeah but still ma'am we don't know we don't know whether there is really a grade 2 whether there is really a myometrial invasion oh, okay. so in in case of if you in the dnc material in our hospital that is what is followed if dnc shows that it's a complex hyperplasia with atypia definitely they'll send for frozen section okay. we do a good gross examination see if there is any if there is any tumor and see the myometrial invasion so in a, in a one setting you will get whether there is a tumor or not yeah. And what is the uh, risk category of that patient? Thanks. Uh, regarding the grading, how accurately are you able to comment on it in the frozen section? Sir, it, I think it will depend upon the experience of the pathologist. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what we do, I can tell you, is usually how do we get categorized, grade 1, 2 and 3. Now, uh, the, there is very uh, small difference between 1 and 2, 5%. If it is less than 5% in the glands, it is grade 1. More than 5% is, uh, 5 to 50 is grade 2. So usually a grade 1 is very, very rare, unless and until I see very well deficient area and the tumor size is less than 2. And we usually, we take at least two sections. So I am sure fairly it represents the tumor. So for us, sir, we do get, mostly we give grade 2. Grade 1 is unless and until 100% sure, I will not give. Thank you, Dr. Sunita Mishra. We are running out of time. Thanks.